Well, now to the potential local impact of that major ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court today, striking down the laws regulating abortion in the state of Texas. Joining us now, live to talk about the high court's really biggest abortion case in nearly a quarter century. Mm -hmm. We welcome back Mark Caleb Smith, director of the Center for Political Studies at Cedarville University. Welcome back. Yeah. Anytime the U.S. Supreme Court takes on abortion, it's mm -hmm. a big deal. Tell us exactly what today's ruling was. Today's ruling strikes down a Texas law. The Texas law tried to regulate abortion by limiting uh, what kind of facilities could provide the procedure, mostly by requiring physicians to have uh, privileges, admitting privileges at hospitals, right. or by limiting uh, what kind of facility could use the procedure. For example, they'd have to have surgical facilities and things like that to take care of women who are having problems. The court today struck down those laws. So, of course, it's always the case with the U.S. Supreme Court, even though their ruling specifically applies to a Texas case, right. it does set precedent. So my question to you, what impact might it have in Ohio? Uh, I think it will have an impact on the laws that we're considering in Ohio. You know, the Ohio legislature has been considering a fetal heartbeat bill and other things. The court today sort of fleshed out this concept of undue burden. And by defining it the way that they did, I think they put those kinds of laws in jeopardy. So my guess is this will deal severe blows to the pro-life community. And part of the news today really was the fact that uh, there was a majority ruling finally. Right. You, you've got eight justices sitting. We've had so many four fours in recent weeks. Today it was five three. It was five to three. And so in that sense, Justice Scalia's absence really played no role here. Justice Kennedy was the swing vote. He's been a pretty consistent supporter of abortion over the years. He was the one that authored that opinion from 1992, the previous mm -hmm. sort of benchmark case. And so right. not very surprising, but still a staunch pro-choice majority on the court. Speaking of the Supreme Court, there are Supreme Court implications, of course, with this yeah. presidential campaign. Right. You've got several aging justices. There is some speculation that the next president will be able to choose one, two, possibly three justices. There's That's a right. lot at stake as far as, you know, who the next president's going to be. Yeah, and it's probably Donald Trump's most effective argument right now for Republicans who really don't support Mr. Trump, don't agree with him on many political issues. That issue in and of itself may be enough to drive support for him. So yeah, I think you're right. The next president will probably appoint two or three justices within the next three or four years. As long as we're kind of segueing to the presidential campaign, we always yep. like to pick your brain about that. We're sure. getting closer to the GOP convention yep. uh, up in Cleveland. I read something yesterday that the, the Trump people, despite him being the presumptive nominee, are preparing right. for a floor fight. Yeah. It, it could still get messy. They, they should prepare for it because right now, according to the polls, his support among Republicans is declining. And so given that, he's vulnerable, more vulnerable than Mr. Romney or Mr. McCain from previous nominations for sure. And so things aren't necessarily settled. I think it'll be still shocking if Mr. Trump doesn't get the nomination, but it'll be ripe for a fight. And on the Democratic side, of course, that striking visual today down in Cincinnati, seeing the two of them side by side, Clinton and, and Warren, is that a preview of coming attractions, do you think? I think it very well could be. Uh, Mrs. Warren would help Mrs. Clinton nail down her, light, her left wing for sure. That would mean her goal is to maximize support within the Democratic Party. And that's sort of what President Obama tried to do in his previous two election efforts at the presidential level. And so if she does this, this will really be a replication of what we've seen in the past. And Warren, a very outspoken critic of Donald Trump. She will come in handy in, in that aspect as well. No doubt. Mark Caleb Smith, always appreciate your time. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Katie.